where where do I begin? Where do I begin? My first encounter with the devil. There's also a part two that's going to be coming out after this one because I've had in total, if I'm not mistaken, three encounters. But the one I remember the most are the two that I'm going to be talking about and sharing with you guys uh, today. And this is to encourage you um, and to maybe bring light to someone out there. And I just thank God for giving me this opportunity to share. <sighs> so this was on the 23rd, sorry, it was on the 16th of September, 2023. Um, I remember the night before, it was a normal night, and if I'm not mistaken, I think it was a Sunday. I actually, I felt a bit sick that night. I had like a, a, a tummy ache. So I went to bed quite sick that night and the Lord woke me up around um, 1.75 a.m. in the morning. When I woke up in the morning, oh my, I felt so much fear in the room, like the atmosphere was thick, like it was, there was so much fear I could touch it. And I woke up instantly and I knew that man, I need to pray because I was scared. I was so, there was so much fear and I thought, God, I, I need to pray right now because I don't know where this fear is coming from. So I knelt down. I normally don't kneel down. Um, I, I maybe sit on my bed or I sit on the sofa. Or, but I knelt down. That's how serious it was. I knelt down on my knees and I, I pray. And I don't know where this came from. But the Lord just spoke through me. Because I found myself thinking, where did that come from? I said the words, God, if there are doors that you don't want me to enter into, please close them. And if there are doors that are open, that you have opened, I pray to walk in those doors. When I finished saying that, I thought to myself, whoa, where did, where did that come from? After that prayer, I went back to bed. Now, the atmosphere was so thick and dark with fear, I was too afraid to switch off my, my, my lights. So I went to bed. I slept. I remember waking up at about 3.35. 3.35 in the morning, I got up and I felt in my spirit that, okay, now you can switch off the lights. And I felt the Lord say, you can switch off the lights. I switched off the lights. Oh my gosh. I switched off the lights. Now, let me just make something clear. I know what the difference between a dream is and a, and a vision or a trance. This was none of that. When I tell you that I went into the spiritual realm, that's what it was. That experience was more real than me sitting here on this chair talking to you. That's the part that scared me the most. It wasn't even a second I switched off the lights and closed my eyes. I literally woke up in the spirit. When I wake up in this place, it's my bedroom. It's my bedroom, right? I literally woke up. I got out of my bed. The lights were on. Remember, I just switched off the lights. The lights were on and there was a knock on my door. I knock on my door and I'm thinking, and I hear a voice from the other side. <sighs> Basically, the voice was speaking in my native 
language in Zulu, but I will say it in English. The voice said my name, but in the dream, it wasn't my name. But in the encounter, it wasn't my name, but I knew that it was referring to me. And it said, uh, so-and-so, please open the door. There are people that want you to come sing for them outside. And I come to the door and I'm thinking, at 3 o'clock in the morning, because the last time I checked the time, it was 3.30, but I was like, at this time in the morning? Then I thought, well, maybe I could, you know, just help them. As soon as, as my flesh thought that, as soon as my flesh thought that, the, the, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, it was as if the, the Spirit of the Lord was standing right next to me, by the door he said to me don't open the door it's not who you think it is and immediately and I thank God for that because I knew that if I had opened that door <sighs> I don't know what's gonna happen to my life and I knew that it was something horrible I left the door and immediately when I left the door I knew I just knew I had a knowing that whoever that thing was behind the door left and it came out through the front door and I had a knowing that it actually came in through the front door and it came to my room so when I left the door and it, I knew that it left the front door again and I went and I peeked through the window because from my window you can actually see outside and you can see the gate so I went and I looked out the window and I saw this person come out the gate and talk to some man who was driving a taxi. He talked to the man who was driving a taxi. The man was so angry, I'm guessing because I didn't come out, he drove off. And there were like some people in there. <sighs> there were people in that taxi. Now, there was other people outside, like it was a whole activity going on outside. There was um, this boy who was carrying a black backpack waiting for the man who came, who came to my door. Which I do believe that was the devil. Because when you watch part two, <laughs> y'all, you, you guys will see. And then there was three church ladies. I knew that there were three, I knew there were church ladies. There were three church mamas who were carrying their Bibles, walking, talking together, walking up the road. There was a couple, it was a whole thing. And I remember right when it ended, I woke up. I was like, God, what was that? What was that? Now, I wrote down all of this in my book. So I had to go back and, and revisit the night. When I looked, because I, I asked God, I got, what was that? And what I didn't know at the time was, I didn't know much about the Hebrew calendar and Hebrew um, activities but on that night was actually the Hebrew New Year it was the month of Tishri it was the New Year it was year 7584 and that New Year was the year of open doors <laughs> I was like what what is what what And I was like, God. And that's when I actually took studying more about the Hebrew more seriously because of that was the most frightening experience in my life. And there are many other things that I will tell and share in part two. And all I want to tell you guys is that once you give your life to Christ, there is a work there. I'm not going to lie. The devil does not want you to live a blessed life through Christ. He wants you to live a life according to the world here. He wants you to live the life that you see most people on the social medias living. He doesn't want you to know what gifts God has for you. He doesn't want you to know that God has a purpose for you. He doesn't want you to live your calling. He wants you to be ignorant. And the word of the Lord says, 
do not be ignorant to Satan's devices. Because I also realized that when he came and knocked on my door, he disguised his voice. Because there is also a verse that says the devil will come disguised as a wolf in sheep's clothes. Sorry, literally after I said that, my camera fell. <laughs> literally, I just said that and my camera just fell and so forth. But anyway, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And the gates of hell will not prevail. This will be done. And an enemy exposed is an enemy defeated. So I will share another encounter. And if any of you guys have any other, you know, experiences that you've had where you really felt that that was the devil, that was Satan, please share it in the comment section or send me a message. I would love to know what other experiences that you guys have had. Maybe when you decided to dedicate your life to the Lord or maybe you were praying one night. I would love to know. I really hope that this has blessed you and part two is definitely coming out. God bless you all. Love you all.